This only works if I can actually compute this quickly, right? This I can compute, you know, in, in, uh, by just scanning over the points basically at the same time as, as reading a point. Um, but I need to compute this random vector, right? I need to be able to compute a random unit vector in um, a random unit vector in d dimensions. So it turns out that this is something that's really easy to do. There's something called um, the box um, Mueller um, transform. Um, and what this does is it takes, so typically your computer has, or your programming language has something to generate a random kind of fraction between zero and one. And you can, this turns this, it takes two um, random fractions, call this u1 and u2 in zero, one into two um, G1 and G2. Um, so these are um, distributed from the normal distribution. From the normal distribution. So this same distributed as a Gaussian function. So, but only a one-dimensional Gaussian function. But the Gaussian function has a property that is symmetric in all, all the dimensions. And to generate a high-dimensional Gaussian, what you do is you can take you generate d low dimensional Gaussians, and you have each one of those as one of the coordinates. It's kind of, it's a pretty magical property of the Gaussian. So you get these Gaussian variables, you do this d times, and then you get a, a, a vector drawn from a random d dimensional Gaussian. This d dimensional Gaussian, it's not a unit vector, but we just have to normalize it. Because the Gaussian is symmetric, it means it's it's random, you know, which direction it's pointing to. So we just have to normalize it, and then we can use it here. So th there's this really cool trick to generate, and very simple trick to generate, you know, random d-dimensional unit vector. So we do this, and then um, normalize. So and that's how you get this this single vector v, and this is your hash function. Um, yeah. Why wouldn't you just sample from two two uniforms and multiply by two pi and pick that to be two, the two angles, and then you already know the the radians. Two uniforms. So you're picking the two angles. You're picking a random. Yeah. Okay. Angles. So so, so, so in in two dimensions, you can do this, right? You're picking a point on a circle, right? A unit vector in two D. You can say between zero and two pi. This defines some direction on a circle, right? So you can generate a uniform random value, scale it to 2 pi, gives you a direction on a circle. This is a unit vector in, um, in two dimensions based with a cosine and cosine. In three dimensions, how do you do this? You just generate the two angles. Two no. angles. Is this, so how do I choose this angle? Yeah, you can so I'm going to, the same. problem if you do this, it'll tend to be closer um, it's not going to be uniform on the sphere. But generating them from Gaussians won't be uniform either. It's, the Gaussian is symmetric in all directions. So it'll be equally likely in all directions. Um, you just have to scale it. You probably hardly even have to actually normalize it because really high dimensions they can be concentrated. In your place, but, um, so people typically don't even normalize them when they do this. Um, but, but if you do this twice, where you generate two angles, it's not going to be uniform on a three-dimensional sphere. Um, I can't think of a good proof of why that is. Let's see, you've got, you start out around here, and then, so, um, so what's going to happen is, so, Think of a sphere. Uh, you first pick a point on the equator, and then you randomly pick one of the um, um, latitudes, right? So from every spot on the equator, you're equally likely to pick the North Pole. But you're not equally likely to pick a different spot on the equator. You can no longer get there. So your chance of getting someplace in the North Pole is higher than it is on the equator. Right, so think of, you first picked a point on the equator, and now think of 
the probability of getting in here versus on the equator. This area, if you think of a band of angles around here, that's the same band of angles, so this is like five degrees and this is five degrees. You have the same probability of falling in this five degrees that you do in this five degrees after you pick the first coordinate. But this area is much bigger than this area. So you're gonna have more points up top here than you will around the equator. And this will get even worse in higher dimensions. This gets, gets really bad really quickly. Another approach may be to try and pick a random point in a high dimensional cube and then normalize it. But this will tend to kind of get stuck in the corners. So on, on, on Monday, maybe I'll talk more about weird stuff that happens in high dimensions. Um, so we've probably, um, we've run out a little bit of time. But this is pretty, very easy to implement. And if you look at the notes, I work out what the alpha, beta, gamma, and phi values are. And it's, you can't quite get the thing where you set alpha and, and beta to be the same thing. Uh, you, have to have, you have to have some gap here in the proof. Um, and it's, it's not the tightest possible bound, but it gets one of the best proofs. Okay.